in the western part of Germany's capital city, Berlin. A battered shell of a building sits atop a tree-covered hill. The hill is called the Teufelsberg, the Devil's Mountain. The name adds a sinister touch to the weird structure rising out of the trees. At first sight, all you're thinking is, I don't know what this is, but it's an eyesore. Towering 260 feet above the surrounding plateau, the block-shaped building with its central tower is mysteriously topped by a dome. Two other tattered domes flank the tower, and nearby, a fourth rises from the summit. Surrounded by a sprawling complex of derelict facilities, the tower and the four domes are covered in ragged plastic sheeting that exposes the ruined interior of this extraordinary structure. This thing is, is really a hangout for rebels, conspiracy theorists, counterculture intellectuals, and most definitely graffiti artists. And there's a sort of an angry presence to it. In the 1960s, the city of Berlin is the center of Cold War espionage. The city is split into four sectors. Three are run by the Americans, British, and French, while the Eastern Quarter is run by the Soviets. However, this makes democratic West Berlin entirely surrounded by communist East Germany, making the West an easy target for eavesdropping. The American embassy in Moscow is riddled with listening equipment. The American fleet at sea is constantly being tailed by Soviet fishing trawlers bristling with listening equipment. Everybody is shadowing everybody. Though encircled, America's National Security Agency, the NSA, takes advantage of its proximity to the communists, hoping to spy against the Soviet Union. So they aim to build a cutting-edge listening station called Field Station Berlin, known to its operators as The Hill. We had listening posts with large antennas all around the periphery of the Soviet Union, collecting electronic intelligence. And it was especially well-placed because it's 150 miles inside the enemy lines in this enclave of West Berlin. Teufelsberg was a place where we in the West could listen in and get a look inside the operations of the Soviet armed forces. In 1963, engineers begin work on a new permanent structure on the summit of the Teufelsberg. The foundations for the new radio monitoring station go deep, but not into bedrock. The Teufelsberg is a 16 million cubic yard mound of rubble created from the wartime ruins of Nazi Berlin. Beneath this Devil's Hill is something really interesting, a Nazi technical college designed and constructed by Albert Speer. And it was designed so well, they, they couldn't knock it down, so they just buried it. From the moment the hill begins operating, the Soviet Union is desperate to shut it down. And that's because Teufelsberg surveillance technology is effective. In each of the hill's distinctive domes, a large rotating parabolic radio antenna intercepts the Soviet forces' radio communications. Monitoring this radio chatter, gives the NSA an invaluable intelligence insight into military maneuvers behind the Iron Curtain. But to maintain the shape of the plastic sheeting over the main dome, the whole structure has to be kept under pressure, with life-threatening consequences. 
It's interesting that the iconic ray domes are still there today. Now, these were thin plastic put over frames in a highly pressurized room, and we're told, interestingly, that the men who worked there had to go through a decompression chamber upon leaving or otherwise risk getting decompression sickness. The Soviets constantly attempt to block or interfere with the U.S. Army's radio communications in a practice known as jamming. Now, jamming was a standard procedure of uh, the Soviet Union. But in this case, there's not a lot you can do with an enclave that's deep inside your system without jamming your own radio transmissions. This structure, high up on the hill, it was so brazen, it must have been a giant middle finger to the USSR. Year by year, the Hill listening station gathers intelligence on the strength and capabilities of Soviet and East German forces. The all-important nuclear missile launcher units are given top priority. You can learn a lot from military operations, from just listening, even if you haven't broken their codes. We understood that when we were on the radio, the other guys were listening. And they understood that as well. Though both sides eavesdrop on their opponent's radio communications, for more than 30 years, the Hill's location in Berlin gives the West a crucial advantage. You're surrounded by a large number of Soviet East German divisions which are holding maneuvers, which are pushing the radio traffic, and it's a great place uh, to listen to all of their patter, their tactical operational transmissions. The Soviets never managed to put an end to the NSA's surveillance. And when the Cold War comes to an end with the collapse of the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact of 1989, the Hill's mission ends. Soon as it's decommissioned, the Hill is stripped of its secret monitoring equipment and left as an empty shell. Today, the Teufelsberg listening station lies in ruins, overlooking the city of Berlin. But its rebellious status remains intact. Who wants to remember that paranoia, that imminent destruction? So now it's a graffiti gallery, and maybe that's appropriate. You know, maybe that's even healing. Even today, the details of its surveillance work are classified. But the knowledge and experience gained on this mountain of Nazi rubble gave the USA and its allies a lead in signals intelligence that has never been lost. We are looking at people's bandwidths and transmissions all the time, and it's still a very, very big part of intelligence. In fact, it's a, probably a bigger part of intelligence today than it was before. The site now has been completely stripped of all its equipment, so there's no clue about what it actually found. And to this day, it remains highly classified, in fact, top secret. Mm -hmm.